And welcome everyone here on Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some ephemeral Katarina. That's right, we got something a little different here. We're gonna be taking some ephemeral cards and adding it with Noxus so we can pair it with Katarina. Um, as far as the champions though, like I, I really wanna play Callista in this deck and Katarina and Hecarim. So we just got two of each, even though I think that they would all kind of be good. I wish I could be playing three of all of them, but we just got two of each. But anyway, let's talk about Katarina. So this is something that I just kind of, you know, wasn't sure how the rules would work with whenever Katarina levels up. If Katarina was ephemeral, does she uh, go back to your hand or does she die? Like what happens? And so I, I was playing against the AI and noticed that Katarina actually goes back to your hand even when she's ephemeral. So that got me thinking, all right, well, if that's the case, let's uh, try Katarina with Oblivious Islander. Be able to reduce her cost. Um, you know, because just have like two mana Katarina. <laughs> two mana Katarina, why not? Um, but then also you can pair with like Stirred Spirits and have Katarina attack for more, so that your opponent kind of needs to needs a chump block because she can attack for a lot of damage. Um, and then of course Mark of the Isles also maybe save her from removal and still strike. Um, so yeah, so we're going to be trying that out, um, but then besides that, uh, kind of going with some other, like, other cards that we want to grant Ephemeral. Like, if we have all these things that grant Ephemeral, we need, we need more reasons to do that. So we have, like, Cursed Keeper and, um, the Undying. Those are all good things to grant Ephemeral. And, of course, Shark Chariot is, like, our, our best reason to be playing Ephemeral. We can keep, uh, Shark Chariot coming back. Um, so, like, Shark Chariot, Undying, we can have some really sticky threats against Control, um, but yeah, that's kind of what our, what our deck's all about. So, uh, we can, you know, flip Callista. Callista can, whenever Callista flips, bring back a big ephemeral, uh, you know, ally. Um, you know, we have Rekindlers in here that can bring back our Hecarims, Callistas, Katarinas, stuff like that. Um, yeah, I think this, this should, should work pretty well. I think that, uh, fast aggro could maybe give us, uh, some trouble because we don't really block very well, but we can attack. We can attack with the best of them. Oh no, what did I just do? I just moved something. Katarina, come back. There we go. Okay. Hey, Walker, love this deck? Yeah, this this looks sweet, right? So here we go. Let's try some Ephemeral Katarina. Brand new deck. Hopefully this works. What do you think of the spell that summons three 1-1 one -one Ephemerals? It can flip Callista instantly. That is That is true, it can. And so that card is pretty good. Just for that. But I think I think we'd really want to be playing three Callistas to be able to, to be playing that card. We'll keep the Oblivious Islander and then see what else we get. Okay. We have turn two undying. That's not bad. Don't have an attack token. That's probably better than I have it on turn two anyway. So Callista Elise. This could be a tough you know, this could be a tough matchup with a whole bunch of spiders and everything. And then if they have, like, they who endure, you know, like, this could be a tough matchup. They just have, like, infinite spiders to block and everything. Come closer. I don't bite. Um. The Keeper or Glimpse Beyond? Yeah, like, this could be tough. Yeah, like an endure aggro list. Yeah, that... This is not a matchup that I, I like on paper. Like just, if I had to pick something to play against, this would not have been close to the top of the list. Getting two Undyings out could could be a problem. Against our opponent. 
where you know, like they go wide and we can't actually block because so we have too many undyings in play. Dang, they, they kind of have it all. Nope, 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 nope. We need more 4-4s. They can attack and block. Hecarim allows us to attack. While still, um, you know, put, put some decent pressure on while we can still try to have a lot of blockers. They probably want to clear out spiders so they can play more spiders, and so I don't want them to get them to just be able to get good value on on these existing spiders by taking a lot of toughness away from all my blockers. Yeah, you mean like after I played Hecarim and they passed to me, then I should have just passed back? Yeah, you're you're probably right. Okay. Yeah. Certainly possible I should have just done that. But but yeah, I agree that, that their their board being just cluttered with spiders, that that's if I didn't want to attack with like this other stuff. I don't know. We we want to get pressure on them too. Because we're not just a real good defensive deck, right? Like, we're not... They probably win the late game with They Who Endure Atrocity. So we probably do have to put a clock on them. would be so much easier if it wasn't for Elise. Elise is just doing everything. Oh, come on. The third skitterer?
No, I don't have the three mana five five life steal in here, no. This goes according to plan. We're only taking four and everything on their side dies and I have, have two things die. Ooh, that's pretty nice. Went pretty good. <laughs> that went pretty good. We got a lease out of here. But it's certainly not over. So, this will be uh, three attackers, four, five. So we attack here six. That'll be three ephemerals. So if I mark the aisles, basically, can I attack first and then mark the aisles later, and then this will level up? Because I'm, or do, do I have to mark? Does this have to be ephemeral whenever I'm, whenever I'm attacking for this to for this to trigger, or can I have already be a attacking and then mark? and then it levels up. It probably has to be a ephemeral. Yeah, I think we have to initiate the attack with the ephemeral on also. That would be my guess too. So I think we'd have to mark first. Which maybe I should be marking. Actually, I probably should have marked Hecarim because Hecarim has Overwhelm. I probably should have just marked the Hecarim because Hecarim has Overwhelm and then I would just rekindle it anyway. Yeah, this keeps them alive. I should have used Mark over here on Hecarim. All right. Well, um, I kind of ran out of time because I was I was you know trying to think of like if we had to cast it you know I was I wasn't sure if I had to cast it there or not, um, and so I ran out of time. This is unfortunate. I, I didn't real yeah you know, I realized that I needed to mark the Hecarim afterwards. That's what I needed to do. I had to, I had to put the mark on the because putting on Hecarim not only gives Hecarim plus two plus two but then also that that additional plus three and so with the overwhelm they couldn't have blocked that and you know we we would have won. Dang. I was I was just busy thinking about if I if I could possibly wait till after you know just because ideally we would attack with just attack with everything they make their blocks and then I mark the aisles and then it levels up Hecarim and you know that would that would have been great but that's not that's not how it works we have to mark first um, and that's what I was thinking about and not really who to mark until it was too late didn't have enough time. Hey, we got a raid. What's up, everybody, from Saucy Mailman's stream? What's up, everybody? We are playing a spicy one. We got some... Um, I'll just try this. Hey, we got some Ephemeral Katarina going on here. Because uh, if Katarina is Ephemeral, she still strikes and goes back to your hand. So we're pairing her with, like, Oblivious Islander. 
that can make her cost less. And then, you know, like using that with other other things that like being ephemeral also. But hey, thanks for the raid. Welcome everybody. Um, yeah, if you're, if you're new to the channel here, um, uh, this is what I, uh, do every, every day, starting at 4 o'clock Eastern. Yeah, that's right, because 3 o'clock Central. So 4 o'clock Eastern, uh, play some Legends of Runeterra. Um, do I want to, alright, we get the double shark attack. Now we're going to start this Undying, because I want to Chronicler the Undying next turn. Ooh, Callista. Oh, stop having everything. I mean, whatever I play, all it's going to do is just die. Is the worst possible card to get. I mean, I don't know. I guess we can use it to try to level up Callista. I don't know. This game is pretty over. Well, we're going to swing low Shark Chariot. I might as well attack. It's not like we can't possibly ever block anything with, with Ash Legion Drummer. We were just playing this Frostbite mid-range deck. I really think it's good. I think our opponent's deck's very good. That was a rough one. Alright, so another Callista Hecarim deck. Okay. Um, yeah, let's let's give the Katarina let's have the Katarina cost two mana with the ephemeral. So that, yeah, so that we can bring back sharks. And then, you know, like, next turn we'll play a shark. <clears throat> this could be pretty sweet. Another shark now. Rude. So rude. Hmm. 
Yeah, this is a cool combo, right? Like, our next turn's gonna be really sweet. It's probably just don't attack. Oh no, Katarina dies right now, doesn't she? Oh no! She doesn't stay alive, what am I doing? Oh no! What am I doing? Oh my gosh. That's like the worst fail I've ever done. Right. There is there is a side effect to the ephemeral. That was embarrassing. I've, I've lost this game now. Obviously. Really dumb. I feel like we just shouldn't even count this game. I'm not used to, you know, I'm, I'm used to playing Katarina. Like, basically, the, the problem there. Is I'm just so you know programmed and used to like whenever I play Katarina, I play it like on their end step and then untap attack and then I can play it again. Uh, and we can't do that with ephemeral. There is a downside. Uh, yeah, that was a huge punt. Uh, there is a downside. Yeah. Yeah. They had a very good hand, too. That is true. Everybody just has really good hands. <laughs> no, look, I did that on purpose to try to hide the combo. Their turn three. So much power. It's their turn three.
All right, well, we'll transfusion over here. Try to keep our thing alive. Nope. <laughs> these spiders still give us hope, though. You know, like, we can, we can, we can manage this with, with these spiders. This is just a, an exercise of um, futility. Like, looking back at it, basically that game I did everything wrong. I needed to just play the house spiders early. Um, you know, play those early for blockers, not play my other stuff, not try to be aggressive. Um, you know, everything's, everything's kind of going wrong. Right now. My dogs do not listen to me. I guess we'll just play the Shark Chariot. I mean, it just doesn't, you know, we're not using as much mana as Sturd Spirits use more mana, and I kind of want to have the Shark Chariot, like, I want to have Callista in play before I play Shark Chariot, to, so Callista sees the Shark Chariot die. I think it's probably just the best play. Using Mark of the Isles on that is just not really important. Uh, opponents playing Karina Control. Alright, so my plan here is to flip Callista. Problem is this this plan doesn't work against grasp the undying or um, get excited. But this plan does have Callista leveling up. If they don't have one of those.
This all started with me using the Mark of the Isles on the wrong creature like four day, four games ago, and now everything that can go wrong is going wrong. It's crazy. Nothing is going right. They had to get excited. Discarded a skitterer. Right, so yeah, I like playing the house spider. It's a good blocker. And now we'll have the stir to spirits. I guess we play it now. There's no real use in waiting. Because if I if I play something else now, we would still play it before my next attack step. Which would still give them time after I play it to use a removal spell on it. Which, of course, they have the removal spell for it. That's a great draw. That Oblivious Islander. That was a great draw. Hecarim should be really close to leveling up. Six out of seven. It's not ideal. Alright, Rekindler. We're gonna need you, bud. Leveled up Callista? Leveled up Callista. Oh. So I have two ways to, to go about this blocking. I'm doing the blocking where I hope that the Callista levels up and then Callista brings back Rekindler. I guess I could have done the blocking of switching these four fours, not have Rekindler die, but then have Chronicler to be able to kill it to bring it back. Um, there's two ways to block here, and this one does get punished if they kill my Callista before I get to attack. Rekindler, bring back Callista, and get a bunch of sharks. That is a nice combo. Attack with one Callista, make a new one. So 
So it looks like if I would have blocked the other way, they would have used the Mystic Shot and killed the Rekindler anyway. Like they, so they, they would have killed. So even if I would have blocked the other way, they would have. You know, they were killing the the four four that blocked. This way does let me keep Chronicler of Ruin though, in in case they have Ruination, I didn't have to use the Chronicler of Ruin to kill my own Rekindler to let Callista bring it back. We have some like nice little combos in this deck. drawing well, just drawing these crappy one-drops for our last, you know, at the top end. That's just two damage. Um, I don't want to block Karina Veraza with a Callista. Uh, she revives the highest, uh, the highest attack, the highest power, and so I've had two four fours die. But then whenever they're tied, um, then you know, like the mana, you know, after after highest power, then it goes to highest health, and then highest mana cost. Kill that with my Chronicler of Ruin. Alright, well, I, I'm not really worried about a Ruination right now after they played the Karina Barraza. Maybe I should be. We get two more Rekindlers, which bring two more Callistas into play. Infinite Callistas. It's just an army of Callista. Oh, that's right. No room for sharks because I attacked with these. I was thinking just to go to go six wide. I forgot about the sharks. Yeah, I guess I didn't attack with the sharks here. Right. Two Callistas would just fill the board. you out here. It's all good if you die. If they play a Ruination. Cannot get rid of Callista. Callista too strong. Where are you? 
Vista has gone infinite. Oh, I guess I can play a Katarina. Yeah, because they can't, they can't uh, ruination. You know, like they they, have, they don't have enough man for ruination. So, so then I'll play Katarina because we're going straight to attacks. Okay, so let's see. I, I want Katarina to to do damage, right? Because I want Katarina to level up. Um, and then we attack with I don't know a couple of these. I'll bring two rekindlers, which bring two more Callistas. And then a shark. Do three of them? No. Three of them, we only get the two. Anyway. No! My new Callistas, where'd you go? I guess attacking with another one of these would be better against uh, Withering Whale if they have the third Withering Whale. Withering Whale kills this thing. Basically just want this Katarina to strike and go back to my hand. That's, that's what I really want. Okay, one and four. I feel like I really didn't play the first four games optimally. Um, I want to play one more. Like this is just a, a fun, interesting deck. I want to. I want to try this a little bit more. Let's let's play it. Let's play some more with this. I have a little bit of a longer video. I mean, it's those games went pretty quickly. This is Draven Ez or Draven Jinx? No, not aggro. Like, I'm not sure if I can even afford to do the whole Undying stuff against the aggro deck. <clears throat> it's possible I can't afford that. Well, it's a pretty good hand. All right, we're going to learn from our past mistakes. Of course I'm ready. And play out some better defense and not worry about trying to attack with Shark Chariot. Shark Chariot's not going to race them. At least, not yet. It's I guess they have Vision. Okay, good. Not vision. I wanna go home. A big whiner. Now we're cooking. Save the life. Save the life. Don't want to take four. All right, so we'll play Chariot and Spirits. I 
What are transfusion? Maybe I should just hold up transfusion. Kind of sketchy. They didn't didn't play anything. Basically decided that it, that just my other attacks weren't very good, and so we'll just play the stirred spirits. And I, I still played a pre-combat to kind of see what they did. Um, if they just pass back to me, certainly considering just not even attacking at all, if they were just going to pass back and, and leave all that mana. This is at two out of three. I can transfusion and kill this and level up collusion or lo uh, level up Callista. Time for the money makers. If they do end up killing Callista now, we at least have it leveled up for Rekindler. What's my best ally that I'm bringing back with Callista? I guess we can attack and find out. The shark. Pony want a carrot? Yes, this pony wants a carrot. Jinx is probably going to kill me. This thing should be blocking. It wasn't me. They should be blocking the Callista, because then it does the, it does one damage to the Callista, but then the shark t takes the damage for the Callista. So doing one damage to the Callista kills the shark. So if they just if they have that block Callista, the shark dies also. They could have saved five life here with the same blocks. That's always been there. Hey, buddy. Oh, all right. Now they're doing that. Well, now that thing's not going to die.
So is there a flame chompers in play or what? Now we're cooking. They got really, really lucky with that. The burst spell speed that emptied their hand with the two cards. They got very lucky with that. Now basically is it better to play Dawn and Dusk on Hecarim or play Rekindler? Yeah, Chompers is in spectator mode, right? Chompers has the best the best seat in the house. So I have to do this first, so they can't just cast the Super Mega Death Rocket and kill my Callista. And then we Dawn and Dusk Callistas. Now we attack with the Callistas, which bring in Rekindlers, right? Oh, what is this other thing? Should bring in three Rekindlers. Two Rekindlers and something else, and a shark. I don't want. An, I don't want a shark. I don't know. Well, we're just gonna do it. So hopefully, three Rekindlers. So it should be. There should be another rekindler. Why is that? Where? Where did that shark come from? Why would it not be this rekindler? This rekindler? This rekindler? Why would this one grab a shark? I should have another Callista alive, shouldn't I? Should I have? Can we have another Rekindler here that brings in a Callista? No, but I'm saying, why? Why did the shark come out before the third Rekindler? Why would it be this grabs a Rekindler and then this grabs a Rekindler and then this grabs Shark? It should be this grabs another Rekindler, and then Shark comes after after these trigger. I should have a fourth blocker. I should have a fourth Callista. Wow, 
Oh, boo. I guess it doesn't even matter because they were going to super to make a death rock at me to death. But, so. All right, so yeah, our, our aggro matchups is, is really rough. Um, you know, it does, you know, we need a little bit more interaction for the champions from our opponent, right? Like, we have kind of determined that. Um, but the the stuff that Callista's doing, the stuff that Katarina was doing, the stuff that Hecarim was doing were all really cool. I, I'm, I'm really messed up that one game with Katarina, of course, as, as we know. I'm playing, you know, having a, an ephemeral Katarina on, I'm playing it on their turn. Um, but as far, as far as what didn't work, it seemed like, it seemed like I just couldn't, you know, I needed to be able to kill a champion every, every now and again, or just have like a little bit of interaction for them. So, uh, so because of that, I'm thinking like Chronicler of Ruin, like basically, basically like the, un this may not just be a very good Undying deck. Undying, Undying didn't look so strong, except for against the control. It was awesome, but, um, you know, th some of these cards, like Undying, uh, yeah, basically like the, the Undying Chronicler stuff, um, it's kind of just more good stuff against control. And so... So yeah, maybe maybe kind of foregoing that stuff and then playing removal is the way to go. Um, I think we'd still have enough good good targets for like Oblivious Islander and Stirred Spirits, even if we didn't have uh, Undying and Chronicler. Um, kind of the same thing with Warden's Prey. That may be, you know, that may be something to uh, trim to find to to put more interaction, some more removal in. Because I, I basically just not playing removal. You know, like we went we went all in on, uh, you know, all these like creatures and attacking and everything. All in on attacking, uh, but not really worried about our opponents, champions, and stuff like that. And <clears throat> so like that's where it starts. And so now we need to start going. You know, that's that's kind of like where we started with. And now we need to kind of uh, tune the deck and go farther towards the middle. Um, yeah, so Mistwraith, uh, yeah, needs the entire spider package. Um, I'm, I mean, I'm not putting Elise in here. Callista, Katarina, Hecarim all looked really good. Like, yeah, like if, I mean, we could cut Shark Chariot and Hecarim and, and change it that way and just go Cat Callista, Katarina. But that's the thing is we just, we don't have room for Elise also. Um, but I, I do wish we had more of like, you know, I wish we could play three, three, and three for these champions. These, all three of these champions are awesome. Um, but yeah, you know, like I just didn't have removal and I think that probably from playing these, I think Warden Spray, Undying and Chronicler of Ruin. I think those are my three le least favorite cards. And so if we take all of those out, that can get, us, you know, that can get us a good amount of removal. Um, so why not Mistwraiths? So the problem, so like, yeah, we could go, could definitely go Mistwraith and, um, where are you at, four drop? And Wraith Caller. There's one small problem with that is Mist Wraith with Callista. You know, every time Callista attacks, you'd like get a new Mist Wraith, and like that's gonna be your most powerful thing very fast. Like when you know, once you have five power Mist Wraith. And so your Callista is just gonna be putting Mist Wraith into play, but you really want Callista to put in Rekindler. So you really don't want to play allies that get uh bigger than rekindler because then your Callista is going to put them in especially if they're like two toughness things you know like so Callista just attacking and putting in mist wraiths is not nearly as exciting as putting in rekindlers so that's that's the problem with that um but i i basically think we could just put in some start putting in some like some removal you know like if instead of like undying chronicler of ruin if we had things like <clears throat> withering whale grasp of the undying uh like that you know like these kind of cards like grass withering whale maybe vile feast you know like that that kind of stuff i think that's where you know maybe 
maybe like one ruination, maybe uh, maybe some vengeance, you know, maybe like a vengeance, a ruination. So let's see, like if we take out this, this, and this, we could have like one ruination, one vengeance, um, like two, maybe three withering whale, maybe three withering whale, and then like one, one grasp, two vile feast. No, we'd probably have, probably want two grasp, two whale, two feast. We'll just play like two of all of them. And that can give us that can give us a little bit of uh yeah that can give us a little something to do to interact with the opponent spectral matron um i mean after like when spectral matron dies it's not like a great card to get back with callista no i think our top end was good i think our top end was just fine I think we just we just need some interaction for the opponent and we need to, some ways to kill some stuff of like the the things that they were doing. Um maybe third vile feast instead of third transfusion. Transfusion looked kind of good though. It did look kind of good. I do like vile feast being little crappy creatures. It's easy to it stirred spirits attack with them. I do like that. I think we just need some removal. Um, but this was fun to play, and it, there was a lot of like powerful things that we could kind of see going on. It's good to have removal with Shark Chariot too, because like the longer the game is, the better for Shark Chariot, because Shark Chariot just keeps coming and attacking and attacking and attacking. So, the longer game you can play, the better for it. Cool. All right. Well, we'll try Ephemeral Katarina Part 2 pretty soon. Probably, like, next week. Probably, like, Tuesday or Wednesday next week. Because, uh, you know, tomorrow we got Rank Up Sunday. And then uh, we got Meme Tier Monday that we'll be doing on Monday. Um, that'll be fun. But, uh, yeah, I'll I'll, uh, I'll play this some off stream. And, you know, see how it goes, like, with this removal. And kind of uh, keep tinkering with it. But there's a there's there's definitely some power here, and uh, it was it was fun to play. I liked it. <clears throat> All right, that's Ephemeral Katarina though. Um, uh, those y'all watched on YouTube, you know, please hit that like button over there, and feel free to let me know uh, what you think of like these changes and everything in the comments. I know I didn't play the first few games particularly well, and I'm sorry about that. But um, yeah, this was this was this was good, and I think this will uh, work out better. But anyway, that's it here for Ephemeral Katarina. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.